The next thing I want to do is to add the UI because obviously we don't want to keep looking at the data this way. So I'm going to go ahead and add all the HTML markup that we need for the front end. And then I'm going to walk you through it. It should be pretty straightforward. And again, my guess is you guys already know HTML or at least you know the basics. Nothing is really going to confuse you. So I'm going to go ahead and put in the UI and then we're going to walk through it a little bit. And then after that, we're going to keep working on our function and the component. So I went ahead and edit all of the UI that we needed for this application. And I'm going to give you a quick walkthrough of what I did. So I'm going to go back to Visual Studio Code and this is the app component. And by the way, I'm using Bootstrap, so everything should be pretty straightforward. If you're familiar with Bootstrap, I have the three buttons on top. So the button to print the report, the button to add a new server, which is going to point to a modal, so a little pop up window, and then we have the drop down to select the filters and then down below I have a simple table and I'm just going to show all the servers that we have in this table right there and then a little bit down I have the modal so the add server modal so this is what the button was pointing to so whenever we click the button then it's going to open this little pop-up window and then we can add in a new uh, server if we want to and another thing I want to point out that I'm going to be using for the UI uh, I'm going to scroll down and show you. So this ng container is coming from Angular and it's not a typical HTML tag. So this ng container, if you guys are familiar with React.js, it's really a React fragment, which means that we're going to have this in the UI as developer for us to work with, but it's not going to create any markup in the actual HTML after the code is rendered. And that's what I'm going to be using so that I can show different pieces of UI depending on the state of the application. So this ng container is going to allow us to do this. So you can see that I'm putting everything inside of the ng container. And then for this ng container that is highlighted, I'm going to show the spinning. So this is going to be whenever the application is in loading state. And then whenever the application is ready, I'm going to be showing this one, which contains the entire table. And I'm going to collapse this and I'm going to show you the last one. So this one, this other ng container, which is just a fragment of HTML, it's going to contain the error, which we're going to show in case there's an error. And since I'm using Bootstrap, so I have to do some import. So in the index.html, I added the JavaScript that I need for Bootstrap along with the CSS and some icon here with font awesome. And then inside of the style.css, I added the, well, I'm adding the font awesome again. So I'm going to delete one of those. And then I have the Bootstrap CDN. And then I have some custom style that I put in for the UI. So all this code is going to be available. And you know, this is not a UI course, so it's not a CSS HTML. This is more on the back end side and the front end side with Angular. So we're not going to spend too much time on the UI, like HTML and CSS stuff. So just make sure you grab all the code and then I'm going to show you how we're going to make this work, how we're going to show different pieces of UI depending on the state of the application. As you can see right now, we're showing everything. We're showing the loading state by showing the spinner. We're showing the data and then we're showing the error at the same time. So all we have to do is to switch on these different states and then show different pieces of UI to the user. So we're going to go ahead and get started. So let's go back to VS Code. And you can see that I commented this line out, so we're not going to be using this anymore. And what I want to do is to access the data. So all the data that we need in the application is inside of this app state right here. So this contains the entire state of the application, depending on the data state that we have. If the data is loaded, then everything is in there. If we get an error, then we will show the uh, last piece at the bottom. So everything we need is inside of this guy right here. So we just have to subscribe to this observable and then manage the UI depending on the state of the application. You can already see how this is going to be pretty easy. So I'm going to go ahead and scroll down in this ng container, this first one, it wraps all the other ones. So if I collapse this, just so you can see, you can see that inside of this ng container, that's where I have everything. That's where I have the error. That's where I have the table. That's where I have the loading as well. So this has to wrap all the other ng container that you want to show. So inside of this ng container, what I want to do is to check for the state. So I'm going to check with an if statement. So I'm going to do ng if. So if we have any data, I'm going to set this equal to. So I'm going to say the app state. So we're going to access the app state with the dollar sign. And then we're going to add the async pipe. Remember, this is how we subscribe to an observable whenever we're in the UI. And I want to give this another name as well. So I'm going to put it in parentheses and then use the as so that I can give it a different name. And then I'm going to call it app state just so I can get rid of this dollar sign at the very end because I don't want to keep using this variable name all the way in the template. So I'm subscribing to this observable by using the async pipe. And then I'm giving it a local variable name, which is the app state as you can see here. Now, if we go back to the component for one second, so remember this application state that I'm subscribing to, it's of type observable of app state. So if we go inside of the app state, remember we have the data state, which is the loading, loaded, or error. So what we need to do is to use a switch statement on the data state. 
so that we can check for when the data is loading or loaded or when we get an error. So let me close that and let's go back. What I want to do is to create a switch statement. So I'm going to add bracket and then here I'm going to do ng switch just like that. And then I'm going to set it equal to the data state in the app state. So I'm going to say app state dot data state. So the data state and the app state, remember that's our enum, that's gonna be like loaded, loading, or error. So we're gonna be switching on the different states of the application. So all I have to do now, I'm just gonna switch to see if inside of the app state, the data state is loading. Then I'm gonna show this piece of UI. So I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna do ng switch case. And then I'm gonna set this equal to the loading state. So I'm gonna bring in the data state inside of the class so that I can use it here so that I don't have to type this manually. So let's go back in the component and right under here, I'm going to put a space so that we can separate the um, constructor from everything else. And then I'm going to define another variable, which is going to be read only because I don't need to use it in this class at all. And that's going to be the data state. So we're going to call it data state and we're going to set it equal to the data state. So we're going to say data state. So that's our enum that we define and that way we can use it in a component. And of course we can't change it because we make it read only. So I'm just going to copy this name and then go back to the component. So since we're switching on the data state of the app state, and remember if we go back again inside of the app state, the data state is of type data state. So these two types are the same. So this variable that we just defined here and the data state on the app state, they are the same type, which is the same enum. So that means we can use this variable that we define, which is this data state here and the UI so that we can switch on the different data state that we have in the app state. So here I'm going to say data state and we're looking for the loading. So let's go back real quick. I just need to see what I named these. So it's loading state. So I'm going to copy this, go back and then paste it here. So we're saying, hey, we're going to subscribe to this observable and then we're going to switch on the data state. And then we say, well, Whenever we have the case of loading, then we're going to show this piece of UI. And of course, you already guessed it. We're going to do the data state loaded on the second one. So whenever the data state is loaded, so on the opening ng container right there, I'm going to add the loaded state. So I'm going to change this to loaded. So whenever the data is loaded, then we're going to show this piece of UI. And then I'm going to do it for the last one, which is going to be the error state. So I'm going to copy this and collapse this. So we have this last ng container where we're checking for errors and then we're going to show this error right there. So I'm just going to go here and then paste it. And what did we name the error state? We call it error state. So I'm going to copy this and then go back to the UI and then paste it in here. So whenever we have an error state, it's going to show error and we're going to show the error message here in a second. And whenever we have the loaded state, we're going to show the table and everything. And whenever the data is loading, so we have the loading state, we're going to show the spinner. So now we can go back to the UI and check it out. So let's go back. And now you can see we don't have the spinner anymore and we don't have the air anymore. And I can show you that real quick since we have a delay in the back ends. So if I go ahead and refresh this, you're going to see we have the spinner because we're in the loading state and then the data is back. Then we have the loaded state. So now we have the data. And you can see now all the other UIs are gone. So that's what we're going to be using to manage the UI. We're going to use the application state itself. And then we're checking on the different states and then show different pieces of UI depending on that state.